One of the most frustrating things about Firestore is modeling your data as a hierarchy of sub-collections. Because even though this is a very intuitive data model that represents relationships very well, it's not very practical because you can't join these collections together to query them at the same time. Well, at least that was the case until now. Firebase just recently released a new feature called Collection Group Queries. In today's video, you'll learn how this new feature makes working with subcollections a lot more intuitive. And we'll put this new feature to use to make a deeply nested threaded comments feature with Angular. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can grab the full source code from Fireship.io. And if you're building a product with Firestore, consider becoming a pro member to get access to the data modeling course. Let's first take a look at the problem that we can now solve with a collection group query. Let's consider the very typical data model of blog post comments. Users can have many comments, posts can have many comments, and a comment belongs to a post and a user. We'll have at least two screens in the app that we want to fill with data. Most commonly, we'll want to show all of the comments associated to a given post, but we might also have something like a user activity feed that queries all the most recent comments from that user. Reddit would be a perfect example of this. And Reddit also allows users to respond to comments, so you can get these deeply nested threads of comments, which is another problem that is much easier to solve with collection group queries. Now, if you've been using Firestore for a while, the most likely way that you've modeled a relationship like this was to create a root collection of comments and then save a post ID as well as a user ID on each individual comment. The reason you wouldn't make comments a subcollection of a post is because you then wouldn't be able to query all of the comments created by an individual user. And that's the exact problem that Collection Group solves, because it allows you to group all the collections in the database based on a shared name or ID. And it doesn't matter how deeply nested these collections are, they can be nested up to 100 levels deep and still be included in a collection group query. And that's extremely useful when you have a complex hierarchy of data like you would with Reddit comments. In this example here, we have a collection of posts, and then you can see an individual demo post has a subcollection of comments. The comment document itself has a user ID and the comment text. Now, in order to create a Reddit style hierarchy, we can also give each individual comment its own subcollection of comments. The only important part for the query is that the subcollection shares the same name. And we can just continue to follow this pattern until we hit Firestore's limit of 100 nested subcollections. So, this data model preserves the hierarchy of comments and replies. But now let's take a look at how we can group these collections together to query them based on the user ID, and also some of the caveats that you'll run into along the way. First, let's take a look at some vanilla JavaScript using the Firebase SDK version 6.0 or greater. To join all of these subcollections together, we just call database collection group with the name of the collections, which in this case is comments. That's going to find all of the comments collections throughout the entire database and join them together. And then we can make queries across them just like we would with a normal collection. For example, we can call where the user equals a certain user ID to filter just by that user. Or we might want to order by a created at timestamp. But if you try to actually run this query in your own code, the first thing you'll see is this Firebase error, missing or insufficient permissions. That's because there are some special rules in place for collection group queries. First of all, at the very top of my rules, you'll notice that I'm enabling the rules version 2. In this example, we just want to go ahead and make all of the comments readable and writable. So we'll say path equals star star slash comments, and that will allow access to any document in a comment subcollection. But in a real app, you would most likely lock down write access for the logged in user with a matching user ID. So that's going to take care of the permission error, but now we're going to see an error that says that we need an index for this query. That will also give you a link directly to the Firebase console to create the index. So go ahead and click on that. Unlike a regular collection query, you'll need an index for every collection group that is filtered by a certain property. That'll take a minute or two to set up, but once it's done, you should be able to make this query successfully. Now that you know how collection group queries work, I want to show you how you can actually make use of these deeply nested data structures in a real-world JavaScript application. We'll be using Angular, and at the time of this video, you'll need to install Angular Fire using the next tag. And what we're building is just the front-end application that can query the data that I showed you earlier in the data model. First, we query the top-level subcollection associated with the post. Then from there, the user can lazily load additional comments or replies to an individual comment by clicking this More button. And another nice thing about this data model is that we can query the data very efficiently, and as we'll see, we can do so in a way that doesn't require any complex query code. And we'll also create a second view that uses the collection group query to flatten all of this data out for a single user. The first thing we'll do is go into this post component, which is responsible for displaying the post itself, as well as the subcollection of comments nested under it. Now to get the first level of comments that are nested under a post, all we have to do is make a reference to that subcollection in the database, and then we'll make sure to call snapshot changes here as opposed to value changes. 
And the reason we call snapshot changes here is because it contains additional data about the document itself, like the ID, but more importantly, the full path to the document in the database. Now in the component HTML, we can go ahead and loop over that observable of snapshots, and then we'll pass each individual snapshot into this app comment component, which we'll create in the next step. Setting up an ng4 loop with the async pipe will automatically subscribe to that observable to retrieve the items from the database, and then we'll handle all the presentation logic in this child comment component. In the comment component, the first thing we'll do is set up the input property so we can pass the document snapshot from the parent to the child. The query document snapshot contains all the data from that document in the database, but it also contains the document ID and the full path to that document in the database. But each individual comment might also contain its own subcollection of comments, which we'll go ahead and call replies here as the property on this component. Now we can come down here to ng on init to define all these properties. The ID and the data just live directly on the document snapshot. We can get the full path to the document as a string by calling comment ref path. We need this full path to make a reference to the subcollection. We can make that reference by calling database collection, then passing in the path and appending comments to the end of it. That'll give us a reference to the subcollection of comments nested under this particular comment. Then we can use snapshot changes to get the actual data snapshots as an observable. Now, the last thing I'll do is add a method down here that allows the user to flip the show property to true, and that will be fired when the user clicks the show replies button. In the template, I'm going to go ahead and show the full path to the document in the database, as well as the actual text of the comment. Then I'm going to set up a div here with ngif, so this will not be rendered unless that show property is true. And then inside that div, I'm going to add the app comment template, which is the same template that we're defining right now, so we're calling it recursively. And this works really well because the observable won't be created or subscribed to until the show property equals true. So that gives us a very easy way to lazy load data on a deeply nested thread. Now, if you wanted to traverse the entire tree of comments by default, all you'd have to do is set the show property to true, and it would fetch every single comment nested under the starting point. And that's all it takes to access deeply nested data like this, so using a recursive pattern like that can be very powerful and very simple at the same time. And the great thing about a collection group query is that it's now practical to do this because we can also make additional queries across this data without having to worry about it being deeply nested. And that actually becomes the easiest part of all because all we have to do now is go into our user comments component, then we call database collection group, point to the comments collection name, and then just call snapshot changes with whatever query logic that we want to apply there. And that will give us all the comments for that user, but without the hierarchy structure, so we get them flattened out in just a regular array that we can loop over. Overall, the collection group query is a very simple feature, but one that adds a ton of flexibility to data modeling and Firestore. I wouldn't recommend going and restructuring your existing database, but it is definitely a feature you should consider going forward. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe, and consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io. You'll get access to the full Firestore data modeling course, as well as a bunch of other exclusive content. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.